go to uh, GPS UCSD edu. And here, um, you can already log in with uh, your account. So I'm just going to do that now. Incorrect. Yes. Um, so in the top right corner, uh, you can just type in your massive and GMPS uh, user credentials and sign in. And save. And now here, uh, this is the landing page. If we scroll down, um, you're going to see that uh, in the top, there's some links to the forum and there's some links to a quick start guide and uh, also to the documentation. And I want to highlight that um, the documentation is pretty extensive. Like you could, you could like go there and uh, read on more. And also if you find it's not uh, precise enough or it doesn't explain everything that you struggle with, um, it's like open source, like it's a community effort. So you can also contribute and add, add to the documentation. Similar things is true for uh, MZMine. And if we scroll down further, um, there's different data analysis workflows. And uh, for this workshop, uh, we focus on the feature-based molecular networking. This was, uh, we did MZMine feature finding. We export the table and one spectrum of MSMS fragmentation information for each feature. And this data, well, this information we want to upload to GMPS now. And I would like to start um, with the um, super quick start because I think it actually uh, is like the easiest way to get started at least. So you just click on GMPS super quick start interface, not the guide, interface. And if you uh, don't find it, it's also just GMPS quick start dash quick start and then UCSD add you. And then on the top row, you can see there's multiple different quick starts and you already see there's like data conversions, some other things that might be useful for you. So you can check it out, but we go for feature-based networking. And so if you click on it, it should be like a subdomain. And if I scroll down, um, I can select the feature finding tool. It says MZMine2, but it's actually the same, same format. So we uh, choose MZMine here. And there's four drop-down boxes. So we have uh, required files. Um, on the left side, you can see feature quantification file or table, file required. And if I just shift this to the side here and open the results, sorry. Yeah. Um, so getting to this one, uh, you just go on gmps-quickstart dot ucsd dot edu and then you can click on in the top row feature-based networking make sure to click on feature-based networking it's a subdomain so you should see it in the in the in your uh, url and then scrolling down we select mzmine2 it's also the default then we have uh, the feature quantification table and we actually um, got the feature quantification table here it always ends with a quant.csv. Yeah, so I gave it a name, GMPS, FBMN, Lab15, and so on, quant.csv. So it always has to be a CSV file. And I'm just drag and dropping the file in here. Or you can click on this box and it's just gonna open a file explorer and you can just select it there. So the only CSV file that we uh, resulted with. That's the one. And then the second file that we select is the MGF. And you can already see um, there's also some other files that are supported, uh, but MZMine provides you with an MGF. But now we have to be careful. We actually exported two M MGFs. And this is sometimes a bit confusing why we do this. It's because it's a similar, it's a, it's a very similar format actually, very similar data but GMPS and series are different tools. So GMPS uses the MS2 data and uh, series actually uses all MS2 spectra and all MS1 spectra that we export. So for, for all the features, 
we ex actually export more information for series. And also GMPS only uses one MS2. So it's like one merged MS2 or just the most intense, um, either way you select it. And for series, we actually export everything and they like downstream merge the spectra and so on. So I use the GMPS FBMN, MGF, and I drag and drop it into the second file, in the second box here. And then, and um yeah yeah can i okay <laughs> um yeah i just wanted to show that um you should have actually okay what no oh my god they actually changed so much okay so and you should in your folder and on um massive um, you should actually find um, the metadata file. So it's... Yeah. Um, oh my God. Okay. Okay, so yeah, it, it's here. <laughs> okay, so yeah, you, you should find uh, on the massive uh, um, data files, you should find the metadata uh, text files. And so you can just like um, copy this over as well to uh, your uh, machine. And then once, once done, we go back to the submission here we go back to the submission and you're going to find the metadata file as the third option uh, optional file that you can submit and for me of course it's uh, lab 15 so i'm going to drag and drop the file here and it's done so we uploaded um, the quantification table we uploaded the spectral files and metadata metadata is used later on um, so that we group files together that, so that we can do statistical analysis and visualization on the networks that we produce with GMPS. Ah. Uh, the one that's not full. Okay, so uh, at least with a batch that we, uh, yeah. So um, with the batch that I shared with everyone, uh, we only exported like a simple uh, feature table uh, where we only had like very limited information. Um, some people that did it manually, maybe you have a file that also says CSV, but then quant full. Don't use this file. Like it's, it's very complex. It's if you're like going deep into uh, features and you want to look at more information, you can use it, but uh, you shouldn't have exported it um, at least for this batch. Um, so just the quant CSV. And from here, so I have all three uh, selected. I can, again, just give my user credentials. And I think also this is a nice thing, like um, the quick start actually doesn't need you to have a uh, user account. So you, you could do it as like an anonymous user um, just to try it out. But because I want to have this uh, job in my, in my job list, I'm actually going to... Uh, submit with my username and uh, with my password, and then click on analyze with feature-based molecular networking. And also, if you want, you can give an email address and then get notified once the job is done. Yeah, I'm just gonna do that as well here, just to be complete. Oh, German. Um, de depends very much on, uh, on your data, it depends very much on the load that's currently on like the GMPS servers. Um, but it can range from like minutes 
to maybe like an hour, maybe two hours, if there's like a lot of load currently going on. Or of course, if, if something goes wrong and it has to get like rescheduled. Um, but usually it's, I would say like 10 minutes, 20 minutes, on one hour. Sorry? Wait, what? Okay, so I click on upload and analyze. And, and here we get to the job page. And um, this is actually quite cool. Like you can already uh, save, save this link and you can send it to any collaborator. You can put it in publications. So you can like just put this link and everyone who has the link can access it. If they don't have the link, they can't access. I mean, they have to find out the hash, right? But so you can just you can just put it in your publication and so on and it's a very nice way once it's done that people can like find your data find your results download the networks uh find what kind of compounds you uh you identified and then yeah like work with that and typically um the website just updates uh like regularly and you're going to see this uh progress uh, progress graph and it's just like a very rough estimate of like how far it's already gone and you can also see that there's like it's a whole workflow which combines multiple steps and uh, it combines library matching networking and a bunch of other things um, and we'll end up with the feature-based molecular networks that we that we know from online <laughs> and also um, you can already make sure that you selected the correct files. So here we see what files were selected. We have the MS2 file, should be an MGF. We have the quantification table, which is a CSV, like quant CSV. And we have the metadata. And if someone like forgot to put the metadata here, it doesn't matter. You can later just click on clone and change some of the parameters and also customize it to your needs and um, yeah, add, add the metadata file there. So, Danny, what do you think? We should do that so, tomorrow night? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think the job should be fine. Yeah, that's great. So, yeah, first of all, thanks. Uh, maybe a couple of more words about the quality checks of the feature files. As again, one is track out this is really uh, um, essential for all your downstream analysis. So be critical with like the results you get out of it and don't assume that you know whatever file there is now that is that's the proof, right? So particularly I've seen like while going through like uh, talking to some of you that sometimes the feature numbers, so basically like the rows of features in like the CSV file might have been much less or much more than like what Robin could do. So there, like, you know, being like aware of the complexity of your sample and thinking about, okay, is that a realistic number of like features I got here? You know, that could be like a first type of like quality check. So who of you got more than uh, uh, 2000 features? So to check that, you can right click on the feature list and then feature list summary, and you can just go with the latest aligned feature list and get this number. Okay, can I see the hands again? And who had less than 2,000 features? All oh, two people have less. So yeah, that could be an indicator that perhaps like, because those samples were the same, right? And like, I think all of the instruments that, that made it into that data set kind of performed well. But that could be simply due to the fact that the threshold was like a little bit too, uh, too high what you've set there. So they may be rerunning it with a lower threshold might bring up that feature. <coughs> Who had way more than 5,000? Okay, interesting. More than Who had more than 10,000? Oh, so maybe oh. you're like on the you know upper end and maybe your your threshold was like a little bit too low. I, um, I saw like one person had like 50,000 <laughs> on a single feature list <laughs> and, um, and the alignment didn't work out. Uh, but this was fixed like once we went into the batch mode and we saw that just one parameter was just uh, not five E5, but just five. 
So sometimes it's like easy things like that, right? But sometimes because we have different data sets, we don't expect it to be the same, right? So that's the idea of this. So yeah, on that note, like in addition to a feature-based molecular networking, so this is where kind of like all this kind of like leads up to. What I typically recommend to people, especially if they're starting, is to also just run a classic molecular networking job. And that has something to do with like, you know, checking, okay, what MSMS are in there and what compounds do I ID by only looking at the MSMS without any chromatography deconvolution and whatsoever. Because then you see, okay, I don't know, there's like, let's say um, 300 compounds identified, you know, and now if you like only ID, let's say 15 in your feature-based molecular network, then maybe something was not ideal with like the, um, the settings here. So typically, if that is done well, I would expect you to have more IDs than with like the classic molecular networking job because we deconvolute um, isobars, right? So like there should be like um, way more features than just by like the cluster. So I think, yeah, that's important to keep in mind, not only now for the project work here, but especially when you like uh, go back to, to work on, on your own data. So yeah, I think if you have doubts again, like um, we're here all week, right? We can we can chat um, about the particular jobs you run or perhaps about your, your own data. And um, yeah, I guess uh, by the end, we um, get like kind of a like good idea of yeah how to, to proceed with that. Yeah. I think for the yeah like MZ mine session unless there are like some questions <laughs> from you I think that's that's all we wanted to get you to so basically to submit the feature based molecular networking job and then yeah tomorrow morning um, Allegra is actually going to walk you through and show what now in GMPS under the hood is actually happening with like this data that that we just like submitted there. Okay, I guess yeah I don't know if there's questions for for Robin and, and Shetty. Um, yeah, we did not um, suppress the blank. Um, yes, we uh, do have something that uh, if you also run the feature detection on your blank, blank samples, that you can subtract them. Um, so, subtract the features that were detected in the blank from everything else. The question is, I'm not an expert in statistical analysis. Um, what's like the best thing to do there to keep them? So you can like, uh, because if you remove it, you have no information on like the blank features whatsoever. So I think for statistical uh, evaluation afterwards, it might be better to keep it in there and just cross everything together. But there is the option, yes. Yeah. And uh, we're also gonna go like, look at that uh, like downstream. Uh, it's usually easier than um, and I just want to highlight, uh, it was very confusing uh, and many people struggle with this uh, part here, but there's also like some, I mean, we're going to put this confusing workshop uh, like online, but there's also some other workshops um, where, you know, we did like in a different way, explain the same thing. And I think it's good to like get there from different angles. And overall, like I think the um, CMFI uh, mass spec seminar that uh, Daniel was like doing online uh inviting like so many different people work on uh, like speak on different topics is very nice uh like it's i i heard from many students who were just starting out um with it that this really helped them like just go through like the tools and learn because it's just like one hour or less and then like everything in there yeah um, um, okay, so is that I have full CTs and I only use those features that uh, seem to have like low, um, very like frequency variation. Um, so uh, there is some way to pick out some features that you do not want to process because they are supposed to have like the same intensity of each other. That's usually so. Um, the, the question was if, like, we could also use uh, pooled QCs because many people use pooled QCs, so just pooling all the samples and then um, basically measuring it over and over again. And you should not see like a, uh, like a huge deviation uh, across the uh, QC injections. Um, I know that some people love the pooled QCs, 
and they are good for like specific things. But then uh, because you also dilute uh, your samples, so if you're looking at samples that are very similar and you want to see features that are in, present in most of the samples, you're going to detect them in the QC. If you have some, some um, compounds that are very specific to a subgroup of your sample set, uh, you're going to dilute them down and they're going to fall out because like they fall out the analysis because they're going to have more than 20% of variation or they're just not going to be in the QC, right? So you don't have a variance on those features. So um, it's, it's a very nice uh, example and many people actually do both, right? Q, uh, pool QCs and then just like uh, standards uh, mixed up to QC. So it's like very hard. We usually do it downstream. Okay. And like uh, R and Python and like all the other tools. Make, make more yeah, it's a bit more flexible because people want to customize it. And so, yeah. Um, yeah, okay, that's it. So um, definitely uh, highly recommend this. And I guess we're going to put it out later as some more resources. And um, I'm going to finally give over the stage to Axel. So...